Okay, so today we're going to start talking about volume. We're going to be looking at three-dimensional shapes. So that means shapes that you could actually hold in your hand. They're not going to be flat like a piece of paper. There's something that you could fit inside of them. And volume actually is going to be finding how much space there is inside of one of these shapes. So there's two measurements that we can find. Surface area, which is how much is on the outside, the surface. So if you're talking about a box, you're talking about how much cardboard it takes to build that box, how much wrapping paper it takes to wrap the box. That's vo that's surface area, sorry. Volume is how much is on the inside. How much can you fit inside? How much water would it take to fill this if this was a fish tank? Um, how much air is in there? How If you knew the size of the objects you were putting in, how many could you put in there? That's all gonna be determined by the volume, the space on the inside. Now today we're going to be specifically just talking about prisms. Now prisms come in all different shapes and sizes, so you can see three of them here. We've got a rectangular prism, we've got a triangular prism, and then we've got a trapezoidal prism. So they're all prisms, so we need to figure out what does that mean. And obviously these have trapezoids, these have triangles, and these have rectangles. So a prism is any 3D object with two identical ends that are parallel to each other. So a rectangle has lots of opposite ends that are parallel, meaning they're going the same direction. Top and the bottom are going the same direction. The sides are going the same direction. The front and the back are going the same direction. All parallel. So it's a little harder to see the two ends. But if you look at the triangular prism, there's only two ends to this. The triangle that you see here in the front and the triangle that you see here in the back. Those are the only two that are parallel to each other. Okay, These other sides, if you look at this one up here, doesn't have a side that's going parallel to it. Okay, It's got a side that's diagonal cutting into it, and another side that's hitting it at 90 degrees. So none of these have an opposite end, like a cap on the other side, except the triangles. And that's why it's a triangular prism. The trapezoidal prism, again, has all these sides, but the only two sides that are parallel to each other, going in exactly the same direction, are the trapezoids, and they also have these end caps. Okay, the top and the bottom here. So the bottom and the top, which are rectangles, they're also parallel to each other. But they have to be identical to make it a prism. So they're not just parallel, they have to be identical. The same exact shape, the same exact size. So in the trapezoidal prism, the two sides that we're looking at are the trapezoids because this front trapezoid and this back one, they're identical, the same size and they're parallel. The top and the bottom here, which are rectangles, they're parallel, and they're the same shape, they're rectangles, but they, they're they not identical, they're not the same size. This one on the bottom is much tinier than this one up top. Another shape, a common shape that also is very similar and you could consider a prism, is like a can of soup, and we call it a cylinder, and we'll be looking at them later on. But a can of soup, you don't have to draw this if you're not good at drawing circles, but a can of soup is another prism, because if you look at the top and the bottom, they're identical, they're parallel. Okay, that's a prism. Okay, you've got the two pieces on the end, the two circles, and they're just connected. So they, you could have two rectangles connected like a box. You could have two circles connected like a can, or you can have any of these other shapes. And so for all of these, if you want to know how much space is on the inside, it's very easy. For all of them, it's this formula. Volume equals big B times H. Now big B is not just base. It's the area of the base, and that's why we're going to use a big B instead of a little b. Little b is just the base, usually of a two-dimensional shape. Big B is the area of the base. Now the bases are going to be these identical sides. So looking forward to a cylinder, if you wanted to find the volume of it, you have to find the area of these circles. And then all you do is multiply by the height. How far apart are they? Even if it's rectangles. What's the area of these individual rectangles, the two-dimensional shape, and then how far apart are they? That's all this formula is. Area of these two end caps, and you only need to find one of them because they're going to be the same. So you just find the area of it, and then you just multiply basically by how tall it is. Okay, so it doesn't matter what shape it is, find the area of those caps, multiply by how tall it is. That's it. So let's look at this one. Volume equals big B times H. Now, big B is going to be represented by a different formula for every single one of these. Because if we were doing this and we had to find the area of the space, since it's a circle, it would be pi r squared to find that. Because that's the area of a circle. 
and then we would multiply it times the height. Well, we're not going to do pi r squared here because it's not a circle. So to find the volume, we need to find the area of this little rectangle up here and then multiply by how tall this thing is. Okay, so this two-dimensional rectangle at the top that we would consider the base is 5 by 3. And then the height of this whole three-dimensional shape that you can hold in your hand is 4. The other way to think about it is you've got two bases, so that would be the top and the bottom here. And one way to say it is how tall is this shape, but also how far apart are the bases. If you connect the bases, you got the base on the top, the base on the bottom. If you connect the bases, connect the bases, that's the height. All right, so we're going to actually replace big B with the formula for whatever shape it is. We're going to leave this height alone. All right, so in here, we're finding base times height because it's a rectangle. So just for that little two-dimensional shape, the area is base times height. And so we're going to do that base times height. And so I actually want to turn this into big B and big H so that we don't get confused. The original formula will use a big B and a big H because if we have an H here twice, technically you've got to put the same number in both spots because it's the same variable. So what we need to do is make a difference between these two. So big H will be height of the whole shape. Little h is just height of this rectangle up top. So if I had to find the area of this little rectangle, it's base times height. And if I was plugging in, it's just 5 times 3. And then the height of the whole shape, the connection between those two bases, is 4. Now you could write this all the way out. You could do 15 and then times 4, but you can go straight to your answer here. So 15 times 4 is 60. That's the volume. And now we multiplied something that was centimeters, 5 centimeters times 3 centimeters times 4 centimeters. Three of them. Volume is always centimeters to the third power. Just like area is always to the second power, because we were just multiplying two things. Centimeters times centimeters, base times height. Now we're multiplying base times height times the big height. Three things, centimeters to the third power. Okay, this is going to work for every single prism. Now, these specific rectangular prisms, though, they have their own special formula, length times width times height, that's going to work for them. And the reason this separate formula works, as opposed to these other shapes, is that you could call almost any of these sides the bases in a rectangular prism because it's got these left and right set of bases, it's got this front and back set of bases, it's got this top and bottom set of bases, whereas the cylinder over here only has one set of bases, the two circles. The triangular prism only has one set of bases, the two triangles. Even the trapezoid only has one set of bases, the trapezoids, because we talked about the top and the bottom aren't the same size, so you can't consider those the bases. So these are special, they have this formula that'll work every time, and what's nice about this length times width times height, is you're just grabbing the three numbers that you see and multiplying them. And you can do it in any order. So when you're dealing with one of these boxes or the rectangular prisms, you literally only have to just grab the three numbers that you see in any order that you want, because you can multiply in any order. And you're going to get the right answer. So sometimes a number will show up twice. So if this was a square, it'd be five by five by four or something like that. So then you'd have another, a more than one five in that, and that's okay. But when we're looking at this shape, instead of getting two into, well, where's the base? Is it the front? Is it the top? Is it the side? Just grab the three numbers you see and multiply. So you're probably asking, well, why didn't you just say that to begin with? Because we need to remember these formulas and memorize them. And this one explains every single one of these prisms. So if we've got this one, we've got all of these shapes. This is just a nice, easy, special way to do the rectangle. All right, let's slide down. Working on the triangle. These don't have a special formula, really. So what we want to do is big B times big H. Remember, this is area of the base. And we talked about the bases here. It doesn't necessarily have to be the bottom, depending on how this is sitting. The bases here are the triangles this triangle in the front and that triangle in the back are exactly the same size and they're going to run in the same direction they're parallel okay and then they're connected so if you look you got the triangle in the front has a side of five four and three this is three 
this 2 is how far apart those triangles are. It's connecting them. So if you sat it on one of these bases, so if you kind of push this over and it was sitting on that triangle, the height would tell you how tall it is. So 2 would be how tall it is. So when we plug in here, big H is going to be 2 because it's connecting the two bases. So a lot of people would put 3 for the big height, so we got to be careful. Depending on how this is sitting, you can't just pick the one that's up and down. you got to connect the bases. All right, so what we want to do first in this formula is always replace big V with whatever formula is going to solve for the area of the base. So since that base is a triangle, area is 1 half base times height. So just like up here, when we wanted to solve for the base of the circles, we go to pi r squared. You want to solve for the base of the rectangles, you go to base times height. You want to go to solve for the base that's a triangle, you're going to replace big B with 1 half base times height. And then multiply that by big H, the height of the whole shape. And we already said that's 2. So big H is going to be 2 here. Let's just go ahead and replace it. All right. So this little b and little h are only having to do with this triangle. So if it helps you, redraw that triangle separately as just a little two-dimensional shape and match up all the sides that you need. So we need a base and a height. So here's your 90. It was given to you right here. These are going to match. They're both 90. The base and the height hit at 90. So this 5 out here isn't going to help me. The base and the height are these two sides because they're hitting at 90. And this 2, remember, is not even part of this triangle. It's not part of the base. So the bottom here is the 4, and the height here is the 3. So when I set this up, it's 1 half times 4 times 3. So when I run these numbers, half of 4 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12 centimeters, oh, not centimeters, meters, to the third power. Now, a lot of people on these, they just want to take this formula and just put a one-half. They want to go, well, let me just multiply length times width times height, and then just take half of it. And that will work, because basically you're multiplying... 4 times 3 times 2 and taking half of it. But here's the problem, and that's why I don't want to put this in your notes, is this 5, if you notice, was never used when we calculated this. We never used that number 5. It doesn't pertain to the base or the height of the triangle, and it's not the height of the whole shape. So if we just always say, well, the triangles, we just do 1 half length times width times height. Well, you have to be more specific about where those numbers are coming from. And this 5 out here, Sometimes people are going to use it on accident, and that's going to mix them up. So we're just going to stick to this. Area of the base times the height of the whole thing. So area of the base was 1 half base times height since it's a triangle. Multiply by the height, which connects your two shapes. All right, on the last video for today, we'll jump into the trapezoidal prisms.